All right, so you wanna trade Kraken futures. Well, you've come to the right place. First things first, when you're on Kraken.com, you're just gonna click on futures. Then you're gonna be brought to pro.kraken.com. Conversely, there is also futures.kraken.com. And this is the older UI, kind of how it looked previously. And to some degrees, I actually like this one more. Sometimes I don't. I actually like looking at the logs, which you can see your trades and your profit and loss with that. And then from here, you can also see your PL, but you can also see the percentage. So you're gonna see the USD amount along with the percentage for each of those as well. From here, of course, with any of these trades that you're in, you can also share it. This is actually how I share it amongst my Telegram group, which if you want, check it out in the link in the description below. But first things first, we are gonna go back to pro.kraken.com. And from here, we're gonna go over a couple of different trades. So for example, let's just say you want to place a trade, right? You wanna, I don't know, maybe make a long order. You wanna go long, okay? You wanna go long with Bitcoin. What would you do? Well, first things first, you can do a market order. And this is the simplest order, which is going to get executed immediately. But at the same time, you may not get in at the exact price that you wanted to. And there could be some slippage associated with it. So, you know, in, when the markets are really moving and there's just, you know, a ton of volatility, this could be a little bit dangerous as you may make a trade that are, is not going to be anywhere close to where you want it to. But for the sake of this position, you know, of what I'm going to do, let's just showcase a market order at 0 0.0036 Bitcoin. So I'm going to place a buy order. So this is going to be a long and from here, I'm just gonna click on buy, boom. Now I have this amount of Bitcoin and I can see it in my positions down here. With that, you can also change some of these widgets around as well, so you can like change stuff. You can click on add widget and this is kind of just the setup of how I, I like it though. You can also click on this here, add widget. And if you want, you can just pause the screen here. This is kind of the settings that I have. And yeah, so from here, this is our current trade, as well as if we were looking at another chart and we wanted to go back to that trade, we can just click on this little arrow for this icon. So in this case, Bitcoin. So we're gonna click on that. Now, what do we do here? Well, first things first, I would put in a stop loss. So in this case, we're going long. So let's just say if the price happens to get wicked back down to, let's just say at 25.005, then it's going to, take me out of this position. So 25005. So at a distance of 0.35%, I want my 0 0.0036 Bitcoin. Sorry, this has to be on the cell 0 .00, 0 0.0036 Bitcoin at 20 5005. So at 0.25%, then my position is going to get taken out. And so I'll just lose a small amount in that case. And boom, so stop loss is executed. And then I want my let's just put in a, you know, a, a, a take profit. So how do we do this? Well, in this case, let's just say if price goes up to 25 thousand two hundred and twenty three twenty five thousand two hundred and twenty three so up point five six percent i want a take profit of point zero zero my amount which is three six bitcoin so in that case i'm just going to click on that and then from here we can see our take profit so we can see where we are long we can see our stop loss we can see our take profit now at any point in time as well, if we wanted to exit this position, we can just click on this little X, or if we wanted to change or modify some of these orders that we have in place. So for example, I just put in a take profit. If I wanna move that up a little bit, you can just move that up. And then from there, you can just confirm and boom. So now my take profit is a little bit higher. So that's something you can do there. Now, if you want to exit a trade, you can just click on this close position and it'll automatically prompt you to a market close. So in this case, I'm just gonna close that trade. 
small loss hopefully you guys like this video for the small loss by the way if you want to sign up for kraken then use the affiliate link in the description below which will help my channel also you'll be brought to the exact website of kraken to sign up now also i'm in this snx trade which is down two dollars i want to close this as well at a market you can just click on this as well for a limit and specify the exact amount at the exact price if you want but i'm not going to do that i'm just going to do a market at 100 percent. i'm just going to close and from here, we also can see that I have a STX position, which is down $3.56, which I'm going to close this as well at 100% at a market. So now here are just the positions that I'm in currently. So I'm in a DYDX short. I'm going to make a short, a quant short, and a rune short. With this, you know, I when it comes to me personally, I'm a bit of a contrarian trader. So when a lot of people are long on something, I'm usually kind of bearish. And we had this brief period, for example, with DYDX, where, you know, they released their V4 platform, which, by the way, I am bullish on all of these as well, long term, as I've made videos about them and I'm bullish about them. But in the case of short term, I am shorting them as I'm a little bit bearish. So with that, DYDX had this V4 release of their platform, and I'm not gonna get into the history of this because that's not what the point of this video is about. Maybe I should make more trading videos. Maybe I should, I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. But long story short, they released a their V4 platform in their test net, I believe, and the price went up a lot, and I decided that it's probably overbought. Now, with Rune, they actually, uh, the price has gone up a lot in the past month. With that, if you actually go to Rune's website and you can see their deterministic price, it's something like 56 cents, 60 cents, something like that. I posted this on my Telegram group. And with that, by Rune's, Rune's website's own you know, deterministic price, they basically are saying that it's overbought. With that, there was also this major rally that we had with Rune recently, all the way up to close to $2.11. So, you know, personally, with these market conditions, I am short on Rune as well. And then when it comes to profits, you can also just take a look at your portfolio up here. And then for futures in the past month, you can see I'm up 53% as well and but if you look at my past three months it's actually not that good i'm actually only up 29 percent so i had a lot of ups had a lot of downs and you know recently i've been doing really well and i think that's because i've just taken my emotions out of trading i think i've just been doing it so much consistently recently that i just i'm kind of unemotional when it comes to my trades so therefore i just yeah don't get emotional when it comes to trading which is really important i've learned and yeah, I've just kind of trained, trained and changed my mindset as well when it comes to trading and also just putting in stop losses. So, you know, a lot of times people are, you know, they don't really want to put in a stop loss because you can get wicked out of a position, right? So like, let's just say you were trading at this position, you could have get you could have gotten wicked out. Like this, there is a major wick here, and this is the problem I think with trading meme coins, is they can be extremely dangerous because they're so volatile. And for example, with Pepe and other meme coins, I just don't trade them. I usually like to trade the top, like you know, one to one hundredth when we're taking a look at market cap. So the top one hundred, I usually like to trade those, as they aren't as volatile and they don't have major wicks like some meme coins do even though pepe i believe is in the top 50 position it's just a little bit more volatile than i would like and so it's just not something that i would personally trade so of course you can go ahead and trade meme coins trade futures on meme coins but it's just it's not my style it's not what i like to do so yeah um now let's go into another trade i feel like i'm kind of rambling here so let's just say we want to go long with solana right we want to put in a market order of let's just say one Solana. Let's just say we want to place an order of, let's just say 10. Okay, we want to go 10 Solana long. Okay, how would we do this? Okay, so let's just put in a market order. Boom, did that. So now we're in this position. You can also just click on this, double click on this and on this green. And then from here, you'll be brought to see, you know, some of the different stats. So you'll see that I'm long, you'll see that there is the profit loss, you'll see the effective leverage as well. This is using cross margin. 
um, you should look up cross margin and also isolated margin and just do your own due, due diligence on that. Also look up what the funding rate is and what that means because those are just a couple of things that are important. So look up funding rate and also look up cross margin and then isolated margin before you trade futures. So I'm not gonna explain it in this video. Now with that, let's just say, because we're in a long position, I want to layer out of this position, okay? This is one of my favorite things and I'll show you, this is what I'm doing on DYTX. So you can see here, if I just click on DYDX, you will see that there is a take profit here and a take profit here. And then you'll see, I even have stop losses at different levels as well. So let's go into this sole trade. And from here, let's just say I want to take a profit at $18.10. How would I do this? Well, I would just click on sell. I would go to take profit and then I would go to $18 and 10 cents. And then I'm going to trade five of those. Boom, place the sell. That'll be my first take profit. And then my second will be at 1859. So I'll just put this in the trigger and we'll take five of those. So that will be my total position. So there, now we have it layered out. So if the price were to go long here, and go up, then it, it's going to get taken out at my first take profit zone. And from there, five of them will be executed and I'll have that profit locked in. And then if it goes up even more, then I'll have more uh, profit at five soul taken from there at that level. Now, if I want to put in a stop loss, I can also put in a sell stop loss. And then from here, let's just say I want to put in the stop loss at 17, let's just say 17.32. So I'm gonna make this super tight, this trade. So 17.32, and then I'm gonna put in 10. Conversely, I could also put in five here, and then I could put in another five at another level as well. If I didn't wanna get stopped out completely all in one trade, that's something you can do there. Now, with that, I am now up seven cents, but I'm gonna close this position out of market. So let's just close that. Let's just say we wanted to short Solana. So we wanted to short at a market. I'm gonna put it on the sell side. And also you can use alerts here. And if you pair this with your phone, with Kraken Pro, you can get alerts to your phone, but uh, you can also do uh, trading view. And what I have is I actually put in all of the different assets that they have on Kraken that are listed and I put those in a complete watch list. And so from here, this is kind of what I'll check. I'll, I'll look at the price percentage change. And then from here, I can just put in alerts and then those will get sent to my devices as well. So if I wanna put in a different alert at a specific le level, I can just do that here. But if you wanted to, you can do it just straight on with Kraken. So let's put in a sell. So first of all, let's remove some drawings here and then I am just gonna remove these previous orders that we had. So we are going to put in a sell at 10. So we're gonna do that here. We can also change the leverage. So in this case, I will make it, I usually just do around two to three X. Usually that's what I like to do. I don't like to do much more than that because it's just so volatile and from here, I'm just gonna put in a sell at a market order as well. So you can do a limit if you wanted to. So for example, if you wanted to limit, so when the price hits X amount, like let's just say if it went down to $17.40, then I want to you know, execute a sell short of 10 sol. You can do that here if you wanted to. Personally, I actually tend to not really do this. I tend to just use market orders, which again, can be a little bit dangerous on times where there's tons of volatility as your order probably won't be placed where you want it to be. But usually I'm just the type of person that just, you know, I see a trade and I wanna execute it immediately. That's usually how I trade. Even though I'm a swing trader and a whole other, a whole other trade for, you know, multiple days, oftentimes I, you know, want to just immediately be in a trade. And to do that, that's a market trade. So 10, let's just say at a market sell from here, I am short now 10. Let's just put in a stop loss. If the price wicked back to 18, let's just say $18 and seven cents, 18 dollars and seven cents. I want my position taken out completely. Sorry, this has to be actually on the buy side. Stop loss at $18 and let's just say 10 cents. And then tensile 
So that'll be a 2.67% uh, loss. And so now we're just gonna click on buy sold. And so it's it can be a little bit confusing because you're looking at buy sold, even though you're actually just putting a stop loss on this position, if that makes any sense. Now from here, let's put on a take profit. And from here, let's just, you know, have a take profit at five, let's do five at 1720. And so that'll be a 2.44% uh, gain. And so that's five. And then we'll put another five at 1690. So at 1690, we're going to put on another five. Boom, take profit. So now what does this chart show us? So we can see that we are short 10 sold at this current price point, right? Right where this line is. And with that, we can see that we have a stop loss. So if the price were to bounce up to this level, then we are going to get taken out of our position and we will cl close it from there. And that'll be at 10. Then if the price continues to go down, we can take profits on the way down and layer in our profits. So that's, this is currently what I've been doing a lot of. And again, you can see this on this DYDX trade. So I shorted from $2.08 and now we're at $1.86. And there has been take profits all the way down, by the way, I have taken a few at this level. And so with that, they just pretty much automatically get layered out. And also I don't have to worry if the price were to go in reverse the other way, then I will be stopped out of my trade, which usually, you know, as much as it is a bad thing, at least you have a stop, you know, which is important, honestly, when it comes to risk management and trading strategies and just, yeah. So that's kind of how I trade on a crack in futures. You can also go to the challenge and then from here you'll see your trading volume. So in my case, I have placed $72,000 of trading volume. And from there you actually get certain amounts of bonus as well. So yeah, it's just, you know, I would say it's, it's, it looks a lot more complicated than what it is, but once you start doing this consistently, like every single day or every few days making a trade, then in that case, you actually get used to it and it's it's not that bad and yeah. So I would suggest if it's a little bit confusing at first, just starting to place a couple of trades, making sure you're putting in stop losses, of course, not financial advice, just getting used to, you know, the overall layout, how it looks, you know, and changing it to the, to the way that, you know, you want it to look like with the widgets. And yeah, and then just, you know, placing in some trades and that's really it. And then from here, you can look at analytics as well for any of these assets. So in this case, DYDX, you can see the aggressor differential. You'll see the, you know, order book and slippage. You'll see trade counts, rolling volatility and a couple things. I don't really look at that when I make a trade. I mean, I think a lot of this stuff can be manipulated on the back end, for example, like funding rates. And while they're important to look at, there is a lot of manipulation that can be taken with that. So I don't really look at that completely. So yeah, and then, you know, at any point, if I wanted to just close the trade, I can just do that here by clicking on this X button and then just click on market and just close out completely. So yeah, so here are some of the trades that I'm in. I'm also gonna close this sole trade as well. And yeah, so these are the current trades that I am in and you know, I think it's nice as well because I can just take profits all the way to the downside, which is what I wanna do. And cause I'm short in all of these. So yeah, if you guys learned something or if you guys want me to make more of these videos or maybe go over more of the features, more in depth, let me know in the comments down below. And if you guys like this video, do me a favor by minting me a subscription down below. So this is like my third or fourth time recording this cause I had something wrong with my recording. So my voice is shot pretty much at this point. So anyways, guys, have a nice day.